say TBD signing. Okay, so TBD stands for to be determined, obviously, right? But it basically means we have the signing appointment, but we don't know when it needs to close. And you're probably thinking like, why in the world would you not know when it needs to close? I'll tell you. So there are different times um, when you're doing loan closings, for example, let's say for example, so in a loan closing, you have the lender, you have title or the closing attorney, and then you have your buyer. So title could be ready ready to rock and roll, but they're waiting on the letter to get all their final numbers and go through underwriting for their one last um, uh, swoop through to make sure the loan is good to close, and then they send it to title. Now, the lender could be good, but title could say, ooh, hold on, we need to do one more thing. We're not ready, we're not ready. It could be a number of things. And so they're like, we know we're gonna close today, but we're not quite there yet. Give me a second, okay? So that's why it could be TBD. It also could be TBD because everyone's ready, Except the buyer. <laughs> so the lender is done, the title company is done, and they're like, all right, we're ready to close. And the buyer is like, ooh, uh, I'm out of town. I'll be there in about three to four hours, give or take. But they can't reach the buyer. Something is going on where the buyer is just like, I'm not really sure. I'm at work, I'm on call, I don't know exactly what time I'm gonna get off. Can you call me back? <laughs> right? It could be anything. And so when it says TBD as the notary, you can take it. What happens is you take the order, they'll say, hey, typically we're waiting on this or on that. We'll keep you posted. Let's say, for example, you took that TBD at 12 o'clock and they don't get back to you and then they finally reach back out at 8 o'clock and they say, hey, can you do it? You can say no. What I think we will do, let's say, for example, I take it at 12. I'll check in periodically, periodically, but when I know I'm going to be hitting my cutoff or when I'm not going to be able to go anymore, let's say it's 6 o'clock and I know I don't want to leave out of the house past 8, I'll send them an email, hey, you know, I, I would love to do this signing for you. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be available to close it if it goes past 8 p.m. I just wanted to give you a heads up. Now everyone's on the same page. And if they know they have an inkling, we're probably going to close at 9, they'll say, thank you so much for letting me know that I'm going to go ahead and reassign it. Or they'll say, you know what? I think we'll be able to close in about 30 minutes, so we'll be solid. Awesome, but it's communication, okay? Communication is key whenever you're working with anyone, but more specifically for loan closings. Everyone has to work together. The lender, the title company, the borrower, and you. You're all, you all have to work together for this loan to even close and be a successful transaction. So if that, that's also why I say you have to understand the entire um, industry of loans. So. And that also went into why, I remember when I first went and got my loan officer license. So I, but first I was just a notary, then I went ahead and got my title producer's license because I wanted to know more about what title did. So I got that license so I could understand more of what they're into. And it also allows me to know what they need, how to work with them. So I went ahead and did that. You don't have to do that, but I, lo I love learning, so that's what I do. But So I took a look at that license. Then from there I went ahead and got my loan officer license. That's the next piece of the puzzle. I said, I wanna know what, Lenders do. So I learned that piece and that opened up so many like things in my head. I was like, that explains all of this, right? And that also explains why when I did that, I learned why you should never try to explain a loan closing, especially their figures, because you would think, oh, this always happened. You have when I became a loan officer, do you know how many lenders there are? Do you know how many products there are? Do you know how many do you know lenders change what they're gonna do almost every day? Like, hey, we got a new way to close this loan. <laughs> it's like, whoa, 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 okay? So for you to think that, well, all loans have to move like this, no, 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 no. I was, uh, I was like today years old. No, I was loan officer days years old when I got my license and I was like, oh my goodness, there's so much more that goes into uh, getting a loan approved than just meeting the what, what most people think is oh having a good credit score and having some money in the bank. That it's it's so much more than that. Um, so I went ahead and got that, and then I went ahead and got my real estate license, which opened up more information for me to know. And so now when I go into loan closing appointments, I'm so much more knowledgeable, and I'm able to see everyone's piece in the puzzle. You know, have you ever been to like a purchase close and the realtor is like really down on you, and they're like, come on, come on, come on, why? <laughs> Oh, well, most, well, they, they want to make sure the loan closes, but they also want to get paid. And uh, depending on the realtor and how they're, uh, how it works with their broker and things like that, they can get paid the same day if it closes success, uh, successfully. And, you know, different things are, are all moving. So they want to be a part of that situation because they're invested in their client, but they're also invested in themselves. Just like title, a title to them doesn't get paid for a number of things if that loan doesn't close. The lender, again, won't get paid if that loan doesn't close. So, and the buyer doesn't get their house if that loan doesn't close. So everyone has to 
to work together for that loan to be a success. And the only way that's gonna happen is if everyone is communicating effectively during that transaction, before, during, and after that transaction. Which is why you have to provide that great customer service. When I typically will close out a loan closing, I will send the scans, the ID, the invoice, whatever is needed. And I also will typically say any notes about the signing. And then I usually put a clause in there that says something along the lines of, if you need anything else for this loan to close, please let me know, I am available. Why? That lets you know that I know that things happen all the time. And just because I send you a package back doesn't mean that loan's gonna close. And if you think as a notary it's just about notarizing papers and sending it back in and you wash your hands of it, you're gonna be at a disadvantage because there are notaries like me who pays attention to their client. And your client is not just the borrower, the client, your client is that title company. And if you take care of that title company and you help them get those loans closed, then now you're feeding the title company and they will feed you in return. I can't tell you the amount of times that I've caught corrections on documents and notified titles they could fix it and they thanked me. Or said, you know, I had a closing recently where I did the closing and the title company was in the same city and they gave me a shipping label, but I said, hey, I'm gonna drop it off. And they were laughing like, you know, you could have you know, put a thing. I said, yeah, but you pay for FedEx and you pay for UPS and it's no point we're in the same city, you're like 20 minutes away from me, not even, like 15. Let me save you this little 40, 50 dollars, you know, FedEx label. That's, you know, it's things like that. And they're like, oh my God, you're so sweet, thank you. Because guess what, it's coming out of their bottom line. So I can drop it off, see, it is not that deep. What it's never been is that serious, okay? But what that does do, it makes me their go-to notary. Because I, how many notaries know that when they give you that shipping label, they're paying for that shipping? And do you ever even look at it to see if that company is in the same city that you're in? And think about that, if they get those docs back sooner, they can process them sooner. And it doesn't mean that you have to go out of your way and drive an hour to drop a package off, I'm not saying that. I'm saying when it's convenient and you can make it work, why not care about your client? Who is that title company? You see what I'm saying? These are the things that make a good notary stand out and become a great notary. But I hope that helps you. If you wanna learn more, definitely get into my training online. You guys know where to find me, notarytonotary.com. You can become a great notary. A successful notary, you have to learn how to do it. And I always say, if there's anyone in your state that's doing it, that's doing it successfully and making money, you can do the same thing. And if you're not, it's because you're missing something. It's not that it doesn't work, it's that you don't work. <laughs> no, it's not that it doesn't work, it's that you have put the pieces in place for it to work for you. That's literally what it boils down to.